supported by the National Science Foundation under grant number 0942672. An OLED, or organic light emitting device, is a new technology for making displays that is cheaper, brighter, and more environmentally friendly. OLEDs can replace LCD and LED screens for cheap, low power, brighter, and flexible displays. How do they work? They work like LEDs. Electrons in the highest occupied molecular orbital combine with holes in the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital and light is emitted. The electrons and holes hop from molecule to molecule, driven by the electric field. OLEDs and LEDs both have regions that conduct mostly electrons or mostly holes, but both involve radiative recombination. In LEDs, recombination takes place between bands of a semiconductor. In OLEDs, recombination takes place between levels of the molecule. OLEDs are made up of thin layers of different materials. In this structure, the top aluminum and bottom ITO metals are cross-linked and the pixels are where the metals cross. Each of the layers has a special purpose in the OLED structure. The bottom layer is a transparent conductive metal, indium tin oxide, or ITO. The next layer is a contact enhancement layer made of an organic conductor, polyethylene dioxythiophene, polystyrenosulfate, or PDOT PSS for short. The next layer is the hole conducting layer, NN diphenyl NN prime 3 methylphenyl 11 biphenyl 4 4 prime diamine, called TPD. This layer preserves the role of the pedo layer in an LED. The next layer is the electron conducting and recombination layer, aluminum quinoline, ALQ3. This plays the role of the end dope side on an LED. The next layer is a thin lithium fluoride cathode enhancement layer, only 10 angstroms thick. This is followed by a top layer of contact metal. How is it made? Starting with an ITO coated slide, most of the ITO is removed in order to leave metal stripes. Because the metal is transparent, an ohmmeter is used to check which side has the metal on it. Thin strips of tape are put down to mask or protect the metal. The slide is then put into an acid mixture to remove the rest of the metal where the tape doesn't cover it. The slide is put in acetone and isopropyl alcohol to clean the metal surface before the P-dot PSS is deposited. The slide is put into a spinner and P-dot PSS is spun on and then baked on a hot plate in order to get a uniform thickness of a durable film. This film helps to get a good electrical contact between the ITO metal and the TPD organic layer.
The organic layers are deposited by evaporation. First, a shadow mask is put on the slide to make sure that the organic layers are deposited only in the center and that the metal is still available on the edges. Then, the slide is loaded into the thermal evaporator. The material to be evaporated is loaded into little crucibles in the evaporator. To deposit thin films by thermal evaporation, the films must be deposited at a very low pressure, so the air does not interfere with the formation of the thin films. The evaporator is pumped down to a pressure of 10 to the minus 5 torque, about 10 to the 8 times less pressure than atmosphere. After the evaporator is pumped down, the crucibles are heated up and the films are deposited onto the slide. After the first set of thin films, TPD and ALQ3, are deposited, the evaporator is opened. The shadow mask is changed to deposit thin strips of metal crossing the top, and lithium fluoride and aluminum are loaded into the evaporator. The evaporator is pumped down again and more thin layers are deposited onto the slide. Then the device is finished and removed from the evaporator, now ready to test. Does it work? It does. Someday this technology may be in your cell phone or computer monitor. You may be watching this film 